Assalamualaikum dan salam sejahtera. Anda seperti biasa menonton sudut pandang secara langsung dari Studio Awani di Bukit Kewangan, Kuala Lumpur. Kita kerap bercakap tentang uh, dialog, kita juga kerap bercakap tentang keamanan. Tapi bagaimana kita menyatukan keduanya di arena global dan dalam era globalisasi ini amatlah penting dan uh, di kawasan-kawasan lain di rantau di negara-negara lebih maju perkara ini sudah banyak mereka fikirkan dan kini mereka bukan saja memikirkannya di bahagian dan kawasan dunia di mana mereka berada tapi mereka cuba mencari jabatan untuk datang ke sebelah sini jadi dengan kata-kata itu saya ingin memohon uh, keizinan untuk berbicara dalam bahasa Inggeris kerana tamu saya pada malam ini I would like to welcome Mr Uwe Morawetz the founder founding chairman of the International Peace Foundation based in Vienna, right? That's right. Okay. International Peace Foundation is a huge name in, in Europe and maybe also in, in America, but uh, maybe in Malaysia we're just getting to know it. And uh, it's interesting because this year is the first year that they're having a series, a Bridges series. Uh, Bridges is a dialogue towards a culture of peace uh, event where they bring celebrities and top thinkers, yeah? Nobel Prize winners, to a host country, for example, and uh, you can have interaction apart from hearing the views and the expertise of these big top names and experts, you can also have a session where you can have a dialogue. And uh, tonight, that's what we're going to talk about uh, in Malaysia. I think there's already two Nobel uh, Prize winners here. I've interviewed both of them. You can tune in to Esrawani to find out more. But for tonight, I want to ask the man behind the mission. And the mission it's very, very noble indeed to have a dialogue as a way of uh, fostering peace all around the world. But we know we are living in quite a challenging time nowadays with uh, terrorism on the rise, economic issues at the fore, and, uh, and also there's issues between divides between the have and the have-nots. Uh, in that sense, some think that people will go back to basics and, and be a bit more among themselves rather than wanting to talk to others. But here you are, coming from Vienna, going to Thailand, Philippines and now Malaysia to have this Bridges uh, series dialogue. And uh, why do you organize this? Maybe it has something to do with the background of the International Peace Foundation itself. i let you tell our audience more about that. I mean, we are, our foundation is non-political, mm -hmm. non-religious, but we think the first step towards peace is dialogue, and the basis for peace is education. So this is why we bring people who won the Nobel Prize, mm -hmm. not only in peace, but also in physics, chemistry, medicine, economics, and literature, yes. mm -hmm. to this part of the world, mm -hmm. but also other speakers like Jesse Jackson yes. or um, artists, for example, like Jesse Norman, mm -hmm. uh, who went to Thailand, to build these bridges mm -hmm. with uh, universities here in the region. Mm -hmm. I mean, we actually started uh, in Berlin after the fall of the Berlin Wall okay. in 1989, mm -hmm. where there was a huge interest uh, in dialogue. Mm -hmm. When the wall came down, so we brought together people from East and West Germany first, Mm -hmm. Then from East and West Europe, one of the first events we hosted was with Henry Kissinger, mm -hmm. Egon Bahr, the former uh, foreign minister of West Germany, yes. and Valentin Falin, the former foreign minister of Russia, mm -hmm. to talk about secret diplomacy after mm -hmm. the Cold War, new developments in Europe, mm -hmm. which created a huge interest. So um, the Dalai Lama then mm -hmm. was the first to take over the patronage for okay. this program. Mm -hmm. And uh, 20 other Nobel Peace laureates joined him, mm -hmm. like uh, Gorbachev, Nelson Mandela, and others. This is where uh, roles played by, I would say maybe of NGO like mm -hmm. I IPF, for example, uh, fills in the blank. Because maybe in this part of the world, when we see on, on global TV uh, the Berlin Wall coming down, we would assume that East and West won to get to know each other and, and you know they're waiting for that to happen for years mm -hmm. but uh, peace has got to be cultivated understanding has got to be cultivated is that your experience from 1989? Yes, you see my own background mm -hmm. as a founder of this foundation is uh, I have been a poet mm -hmm. so I have been very interested in languages mm -hmm. so and um, I found that in our society, even if all of us speak German or Malay, yeah. we speak so many different languages. Mm -hmm. So the um, 
politicians speak another language than mm -hmm. the artists. Mm -hmm. They speak another language than scientists. Mm -hmm or like businessmen or people from religion yes. and they very seldom communicate with each other. Mm -hmm. So as a poet I wanted to create an independent platform for dialogue mm -hmm. where all these language groups come mm -hmm. together because we think uh, our interconnected problems of today cannot mm -hmm. be solved only by politics, yes. only by business, mm -hmm. only by science or by religion alone but by working together. Mm -hmm. Is that the role of civil society, for example? We keep hearing that phrase a lot now, civil society, meaning a society that's very empowered, a society that has a high degree of knowledge. Is, is that where you're coming from? Yeah, I mean, this is a, we are yeah. a non-governmental organization, mm -hmm. so part of the civil society, yeah, and uh, mm -hmm. this program has developed over the years, mm -hmm. uh, basically out of nothing. Why, why did you come to this part of the world, Southeast Asia, for example? Because you've been there in Europe for quite a while, mm. but uh, over the last few years, you've, you seem to be building the mm -hmm. bridge a little bit longer to, to Thailand, Philippines, and now here in Malaysia. Right. You see, we have organized about 700 events mm -hmm. since the wall came down mm -hmm. in 1989. Mm -hmm. And um, as an international peace foundation, we also don't want to invite only people from all over the world to Europe. Yeah. The program expanded then uh, from Germany to other countries in Europe mm -hmm. and also to the United States. Mm -hmm. But we needed more to get the third world uh, mm -hmm. countries also yeah. uh, inside in the picture. And so when I went to Thailand uh, about seven years ago mm -hmm. um, to discuss the possibility of doing some programs, the first one I met uh, basically was the former prime minister, twice mm -hmm. prime minister, Anand Banyarachon. Mm -hmm who is a very well respected person in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So he opened many doors. Mm -hmm. So there was a huge interest mm -hmm. and so we got invited to do this program in Thailand. Mm -hmm. But what I did, because dialogue starts with listening, yes. when I first came to this part of the world, is I took about one year off mm -hmm. to learn more about the Asian mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. So I traveled to most parts of Thailand mm -hmm. I stayed in the slums, worked in the slums with mm -hmm. people with AIDS and street mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. to understand about their mm -hmm. hardships, not mm -hmm. only with my mind, but mm -hmm. also with my heart and I with my own hands. I have to cut you there because I have to go for a commercial break. But once we come back, how did that one year experience of going down, putting your ear close to the ground in Thailand, in, in Southeast Asia, has shaped the way you approach in managing the event of uh, this Bridger series in Asia? How would it be different as compared to the ones that you've done in Europe, for example? What are the main criteria? We'll discuss that after this short break. Thank you for still watching Sri Panda. I'm still talking about bridging the differences of the world and helping to promote peace by dialogue. And uh, your one year experience working in the slums in, in, in Thailand, in Bangkok, for example, how has that changed the perception you have of Southeast Asia? And how has that uh, mirrored or influenced uh, how you organize the Bridges series in Southeast Asia? Mm -hmm. I mean, I got a lot of uh, presents and uh, uh, of course Thai people or Asian people are wonderful people. So uh, I really uh, try to understand more. Yeah? I think dialogue starts with listening, with understanding, mm -hmm. not only with talking. So um, uh, I also studied Buddhism uh, a little bit uh, as a raised Christian mm -hmm. to understand more about uh, their beliefs. Mm -hmm. and. Um, 
also I learned the language, mm -hmm. uh, so to, to speak and read and mm -hmm. uh, understand Thai. So um, this was uh, a very enriching experience. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I wanted, I mean, uh, w these Nobel laureates who are, we have invited now to this part of the world, 32 so far, plus mm -hmm. 13 other speakers and also artists, to have a similar experience, not to stay for one year, of course, but mm -hmm to stay here in this part of the world for at least one week or two weeks. Mm -hmm. Normally Nobel laureates, they are very busy yes. people. They mm -hmm. have got a lot of invitations to mm -hmm. speak uh, for a lot of honorarium. Mm -hmm. In this case, they come here without any honorarium mm -hmm. uh, because of their real interest in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. So they uh, normally, when they travel to a country, they see the hotel or the airport, not much yes. of the people. Mm -hmm. Here they really engage with the people. They give up to five, six events in different parts of the country, mm -hmm. in Sarawak, in Penang mm -hmm. and KL and other parts so mm -hmm. uh, it shows really their interest and um, for them also not only to talk to deliver their keynote speech but really to engage with the public all mm -hmm. the events which we organize with the uh, 15 of the major universities and mm -hmm. uh, uh, institutions here are all open and free for the public mm -hmm. so there has been a huge interest so far in the first two Nobel laureates mm -hmm. visiting mm -hmm. um, so hundreds of people uh, but also there are smaller events organized by the Academy of Science for example which mm -hmm. are also open mm -hmm. only for um, a group of people to engage more into m deeper Deep into dialogue yeah. mm -hmm. for the specific uh, like uh, Professor Gerardus at Hof for physics and mm -hmm. uh, Professor Robert Engel for uh, econometrics mm -hmm. in economy for example but uh, you'll be bringing them more and more and uh, what can we learn from the experiences of Philippines and Thailand for example because uh, it has been done much earlier there mm -hmm. and uh, you have completed a few series there actually what right. have you seen been the best uh, learning curve from there uh -huh. I mean, there have been about 300 events so far in Thailand and in the Philippines. And uh, our role is to be an in independent facilitator of these uh, events. But we're closely working with the universities. So this in Malaysia has been a process mm -hmm. taking uh, uh, of preparation for about two years. Mm -hmm. So I had about 300 meetings. Uh, and uh, also That's a lot of meetings. Yeah. <laughs> we also met actually with the 15 uh, major universities on mm -hmm. a regular basis to develop this program in a dialogue mm -hmm. together. So and uh, what has happened in Thailand, uh, they fall in love with the country, these mm -hmm. Nobel laureates, mm -hmm. and want to return. So the universities uh, who have organized their events, many of them now they invite them to come back on a regular mm -hmm. basis. Mm -hmm. Some of them stay for up to three months. Mm -hmm. So they develop uh, research programs with the universities. Mm -hmm. They even invite Thai students to work in their labs abroad. Mm -hmm. Th so that's a big opportunity, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, so it's really about uh, creating these long-term and sustainable bridges. It's not mm -hmm. a one-time event. Yes. We have organized this since 2003 as a series of 300 events so far. Mm -hmm. Now the events will take place in Malaysia until April continuously mm -hmm. with about 70 events altogether mm -hmm. with Nobel laureates from yes. all fields. Mm -hmm. And uh, then next year mm -hmm. the program goes to Cambodia. Mm -hmm. There's every year one country in Southeast Asia hosting the events. Mm -hmm. And we have chosen the ASEAN countries mm -hmm. um, to work in because normally when Nobel laureates travel to Asia they go to Japan, South Korea, mm -hmm. Taiwan, China. Let's say in the more developed, uh, richer, yeah, countries. richer countries. So where they also have Nobel laureates, like in mm -hmm. Japan, quite mm -hmm. a number. But uh, they very seldom get invited uh, to mm -hmm. ASEAN countries. Yes. Mm -hmm. But there is a big interest. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is why we are focusing on the ASEAN countries. What have been the main questions thrown? Because you do have open sessions, Q&A, you know, with, with the locals in Thailand, Philippines, and also in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. What has been, you know, the recurring theme often being asked to the Nobel laureates, for example? Mm -hmm. I mean, you see, there are so many different uh, mm -hmm. people, I mean, so many different Nobel laureates mm -hmm. in so many different fields, mm -hmm. so the questions have always been mm -hmm. different. Mm -hmm. But maybe one question that is keeps how do you yeah. get a Nobel Prize? How mm -hmm. do you win mm -hmm. a Nobel Prize? Mm -hmm. Because uh, Malaysia has an intention of having its own Nobel Prize winner. I think maybe we have set the target around 2020, for example, when we receive, uh, mm -hmm. reach our own vision of 2020. And uh, do you think this can contribute greatly towards that? Because you might just inspire somebody who's now finishing an undergraduate uh, degree level, for example, mm -hmm. and moving on. And maybe the emotional and psychological barrier is, is more 
uh, you know, is greater than maybe a physical barrier of reach, reach, uh, reaching that particular status? I mean, normally people, especially maybe here in this part of the world, they uh, put uh, Nobel laureates on a very high level. So, mm -hmm. of course, they are, but they are also normal people. They are mm -hmm. approachable. And um, so we would like to uh, inspire young people with these events. Mm -hmm. Normally, they take place at the universities. This means uh, almost all the audience are young mm -hmm. people, is the young generation. And there is a huge interest, I mean, for them to ask questions. And only if in an audience of 1,000 people, uh, one or two yes. really get inspired mm -hmm. by this, uh, I think a lot of it has, has been achieved. I have to go for the last commercial break, but uh, there's been a lot of people involved. Nobel laureates, you name them, you can go to the Nobel site and look at them. And you can also see uh, Woody Allen's name, the Beastie Boys, Franz Beckenbauer, for example. I, after this short break, I'm going to ask uh, Mr. Uwe Morales on what's among the best experience that he has had over these past few years in this series that you can remember as an experience share with us after this, after this short break. Thank you so much for still uh, listening in and uh, knowing how we bridge the differences in the world through dialogue and fostering peace by bringing education and knowledge. And uh, Mr. Uwe Morawetz from uh, International Peace Foundation has been doing that for a few years now in Southeast Asia. And uh, I would just like to pick your experiences here. And uh, big names like not just from uh, Nobel Prize winners, but also from celebrities uh, like uh, Beckenbauer, for example, and the Beastie Boys. Uh, can you remember one or two instances that yeah, you can share with us? Many, many, not only one or two, <laughs> of course. Uh, I mean, Franz Beckenbauer, for example, he's a member of our advisory board, and yes. he has been uh, actually donating his own money to support uh, mm, people really? with AIDS and mm -hmm. street children in Bangkok, mm -hmm. a project which we have supported mm -hmm. uh, from the Human Development Foundation. And um, also, during the war in the Kosovo, I mean, we're not only organizing events, we're also producing CDs or books. So, and during the Kosovo war, um, in 1999, we got uh, all the famous artists mm -hmm. within two weeks mm -hmm. to agree on a, a CD uh, which came out then uh, by Ariola uh, in Europe, mm -hmm. uh, where people contributed like Paul McCartney, Elton mm -hmm. John, yes. where all the Nobel laureates we got uh, uh, for peace to mm -hmm. write statements, uh, mm -hmm. which were then read by Sophia Loren, Woody mm -hmm. Allen, Roman Polanski, and others. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, that which was produced in a period of uh, uh, actually two weeks uh, mm -hmm. time. Um, but also uh, one great event we had in Berlin when we brought together the Dalai Lama mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Robert McNamara mm -hmm. and the Beastie Boys mm -hmm. and Patti Smith mm -hmm. uh, and uh, several Just other famous yeah, people. Very big names. Uh, actually in one event, yeah, and they uh, actually, uh, mm -hmm. it was a very fruitful discussion. I, I, I know that uh, you, s you have told me that you're not a politician. Mm. You, 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 you're not a political <laughs> animal in that sense. But uh, how can you navigate through this maze of political powers and corridors because you do have to meet people from the political arena and uh, they of course will bring their own political element into being but uh, you have to navigate through and still mm -hmm. you know be neutral not seem to be involved i'm sure if you invited dalai lama the chinese uh, government will have something mm -hmm. to say about that mm -hmm. and whether or not you're neutral or not so how do you navigate and, and maintain ipf as a very neutral body
I mean, the Dalai Lama participated in uh, several of our mm -hmm. events in Europe, mm -hmm. though, uh, and uh, there have been threats, of course, by the Chinese mm -hmm. government against mm -hmm. these invitations mm -hmm. also in Europe. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm sure it will not be possible to invite him here to South e uh, mm -hmm. Southeast Asian countries. Mm -hmm. And we're not trying to do that at this mm -hmm. stage. Mm -hmm. um, but of course, I mean, we have to talk to the whole political divide. Mm -hmm. I mean, from your prime minister yes. to Anwar Ibrahim mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. uh, many other people. Mm -hmm. uh, as I said, we had about 300 meetings to mm -hmm. get the advice, yes. uh, to get them involved somehow, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, as we are really an independent platform for such mm -hmm. a dialogue. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you are independent, uh, I think you can get a lot of people on board if you're Because sincere. you can talk to all sides, for example. But We're trying to talk to as many sides as possible. So how, how do you see uh, Myanmar in that respect, for example? It has been a touchy issue until mm -hmm. now. Yeah. The United States has make their stand embargoes and all that uh, ASEAN as a group is trying its best to solve the problem mm -hmm. and uh, some of us has even given up on that but mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure IPF is looking down that road. Mm -hmm. I mean, when peace. we had Jesse Jackson, for example, in mm -hmm. Thailand several years ago, mm -hmm. we also he went. Uh, he talked to Taksin mm -hmm. uh, at that time, and uh, he went up uh, to the border to refugee camps. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to do the best. I mean, that we can. Uh, mm -hmm. Also, we are involving. Um, political refugees living mm -hmm. in Thailand in mm -hmm. this uh, process, in mm -hmm. this dialogue process. Mm -hmm. As I said, we have been invited by the governments of all ASEAN countries. Mm -hmm. uh, every year there's another host. Mm -hmm. uh, after Malaysia, it will be Cambodia, followed by Vietnam, mm -hmm. Singapore, Indonesia, Laos would and Brunei. Be, would you and IPF be the best mediator, for example? Because I remember after the tsunami, when Malaysians went to Aceh to help, Nations become the best uh, mediator because both the army at that time, who was in conflict with uh, the Gerakan Aceh Merdeka movement there, they, they can talk to Malaysians because we are neutral. Mm. Is that the same role that you're going to have to play? Because people might see you in that light now. You know, mm -hmm. in Philippines, they also have some conflicts left. Uh, so does Myanmar, for example? Mm -hmm. Of course, we are comparatively young here mm -hmm. in this part of the mm -hmm. world. Uh, active for only five years. Mm -hmm. Maybe as the event series will develop, mm -hmm. we will see. I mean, we will also invite, uh, we always invite, for example, uh, next year in Cambodia. Though Cambodia is the mm -hmm. host, we are inviting students and organizations from all, uh, all ASEAN countries to participate in these mm -hmm. events. Mm -hmm. And we are trying to build linkages also towards Myanmar. Mm -hmm. of, of course, uh, Myanmar is the only country so far we have not been invited. Mm -hmm. but. Uh, as this is a continuous process which mm -hmm. we have initiated, mm -hmm. we hope uh, the things uh, will ease and we will be able to do such a program in the future in Myanmar as well. And you don't build bridges in one day. Mm, this is right. a long-term process. It's a long-term process. And, uh, <laughs> we have about one minute left and uh, my last point would be on the how do you see terrorism in this light? Because that's the greatest threat to peace now that we're hearing about mm. every day. Mm -hmm, What's mm -hmm. your input on that? It has to be tackled, uh, I mean, uh, by the roots, of course, So, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, is one of the roots, maybe mm -hmm. poverty, another is education. education. So, and this is why we really f be believe the basis for peace is education. Mm -hmm. uh, this is our main focus with this program in mm -hmm. this part of the world. Mm -hmm. And we are also expanding the program towards Africa and mm -hmm. South America. Mm -hmm. So though we are now active here, yes. uh, we will, mm -hmm. this will not be the only part of the world. And mm -hmm. maybe in some years, uh, we will mm -hmm. see some positive fruit. Yeah. Thank you so much to Mr. Uwe Murawes, the founding chairman of International Peace Foundation. He has brought at least two Nobel Prize winners here to Malaysia. And uh, this series will be ongoing. There will be another Nobel Prize winner coming tomorrow. Uh, log on or Google. To find out more, you can go to the IPF website. They have an excellent website. I've been there to mm -hmm. do my research for this. I don't need to go anywhere else. And uh, you can give your own input into this discussion at uh, sudutpandangastro.com.my. Terima kasih banyak kepada anda semua kerana telah menonton dan hantarkan pandangan anda sendiri kepada sudutpandangastro.com.my. Sekian, selamat malam dan terima kasih.